In today's video, we're going to unbox and playtest a set of Tim Galatry Highland bagpipes. Stay tuned. Well, hello everybody, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident piper. If you like this kind of content, please think about liking the video, subscribing to the channel, sharing with any other pipers in your life, and commenting with any thoughts you might have. I also give Skype lessons if you want more personalized instruction, but more on that later. There'll be a full photo album at the end of this video, so you can take a look at these pipes right here, so stay tuned for that. All right, everybody, from Stirling, Scotland, I have a set of Tim Galatry Highland pipes right here. I've seen the man's name for many years, and his work has looked fantastic. I have never heard a set in person, let alone had a chance to unbox one. So this is just the sticks and stocks. After this is unboxed, I'm going to set it up in a bag and all of that. But first, let's just get it out of the package and take a look at what we got here. So as always, I got my trusty little knife. Gonna use just the tiny itty bitty bit of the corner. I'm not trying to hurt any part of the bag, I see people sometimes like really just dig in with a bunch of that knife. Don't do that. Don't hurt anything. It's coming on the side over here. There we go. Let's see what we got here. Okay. Reaching in, get rid of that bit of business. Push through. And what am I grabbing first? It looks like we got a bass drone. My goodness gracious. Wow. Dude, these are lovely. The hemp feels really nice on them. Got a Celtic knotwork engraved pattern. And oh my goodness gracious, this imitation ivory. I've seen it, uh, it was on the David Day set of pipes that uh, I unboxed with my good friend Peter. To see it turned here in a Highland bagpipe mount, it's got what looks to be all the Schrader lines and yet no animals were harmed in the making of this. That is just absolutely wonderful and really gives the look of ivory. Again, stay tuned for those photos. I'll have something on the screen here so you can really take a look at the cross hatching of when this comes together. Just, wow, phenomenal work. And the the relief, the the detail of the metalwork is is really, something wow and even just feeling inside and the bell also nicely finished and and the angle very classic i remember uh, some sets of robertson's i saw had instead of flat they, they kind of were wide at the base and got a little they kind of tapered this is doing that so and the bore is flawless and completely smooth all right that's just one part of the bagpipe. I'm going to very carefully put that right behind me here, and we're going to keep going. Let's go ahead and close this into the box since we're going to be pulling things out from here. And what is next? Well, Tim, great job packing these. Everything looks like it arrived safely and soundly. And I guess it's just all about that bass for me, people, because here's the rest of the bass drone right here. Wow. And again, it's so nice to have the, uh, coming from uh, the maker, have the hemp so well set up. I don't think I'm going to have to do anything to the hemp on this. The proportions of the mounts, the material, that imitation ivory, and the workmanship on the wood. And again, where it mates up between the two, I cannot feel the seam whatsoever. Just classic look, classic design. The, the Celtic knot work along with this imitation ivory, which really could be real ivory without anybody, without any animals being harmed. Just wonderful. And I assume this has a hemp stop. Yeah, it's there. I can see it has a hemp retainer, but it's so subtle you can't really see. But that's going to help keep the string on here. And I love it. It has a nice extended bit of area for the hemp here. That's good. What is next? Plenty of bubble wrap on this. That is good. And we have a tenor drone. Complete. And again, that hemping is just right where it needs to be. Probably just a touch of hemp seal on there, and it would be absolutely perfect for the movement. But the finish on the blackwood, 
and how the looking at where the feral meets up with rejecting mount. Absolutely beautiful. The uh, future owner of these is in for a real treat. I can't wait to get these set up and playing. Okay, next, I'm going to assume we have the next tenor. And I'm going to make sure that, uh, before I set these up, I'm probably gonna put just a bit of painter's tape on each of the sections to make sure that like this remains the middle or the outside. They're not marked one or the other, but I wanna keep these pieces together I don't know if that really matters, but uh, I like it and I want to keep just everything vibrating together from the moment it was made, unpacked, to when it was played. All right, we have to be coming to the end of what's in this box. All right. Oh, and a very nice, got a silver tube on the mouthpiece. Now I'm assuming this is silver. It could be engraved nickel. I will get that clarified before the end of this video. Um, the amount of detail is making me think silver, but, uh, and I actually rather like that it has a black bulb here rather than an ivory one. That's a, that's a nice look. Uh, I, I sometimes feel the white and ivory can maybe bring a little bit too much attention to one's face, but uh, the black's going to help hide that just a little bit, yet still a lovely silver tube and a flapper that's completely airtight right now. Great, great, great down here we have the chanter stock. And again, the wood, so nice. Looking at how it meets up the ferrule and the end of the stock, simply wonderful. And I'm going in, what else do we have? Oh, a newspaper. Um, so um, all of the things that are kind of going on in the times right now from Scotland, um, you know, it's rather tumultuous right now. So we'll leave the times for itself. And that's the end of what's in this box. So I'm gonna go ahead, get these attached to a bag. I'm gonna get some reeds ready. We're gonna play test it with hopefully three different sets of reeds. My Campbell Tunable Channer, which there'll be a review for up here. Plenty of opportunities to hear how this sounds with a variety of different reeds. The pipes are all set up and there'll be a playlist linked right up here about all the things I do to tie them in. They're in a synthetic Bannatine bag and they have some blue, drone cords, and they have an Anderson Tartan bag cover on it right now, just because it looks cool. But more importantly, there's no valves inside, and we're going to be testing it with three different types of drone reeds. We're going to use my classic Easy Drone Balance Tone Bass combo that I've used in several other videos. So again, Easy Drone Tenors, Balance Tone Bass. We're also going to try it with a set of the Acklet Overtone 480s. Uh, you folks have been asking for that. Um, they were on loan last time when I did my Atherton review. So sorry about that, but I got them back so you can hear them here. And then finally, I happen to have a set of old school Canard carbon fiber reeds. Not the Edge, not the Evolution, but the original Canard carbon fiber reeds. So I'll try those in there as well. And all of them again with the Campbell Tunable Channer, currently reeded with an RT Shepherd Channer reed. Uh, going pretty well, I think. Uh, and the tune will be the Battle of Water. Waterloo. So let's have at it.
So now that you've heard each tune in its entirety, now let's go back and forth between each of the three clips of the same performance we just heard, and I've kind of blended the audio, so hopefully it's relatively seamless as you go from one to the next, and uh, let me know your thoughts below on which combination of drone reads you preferred best with this incredible set of pipes. I did want to note that with each of the reads that I tried in the drones, I did have to extend the tuning screw out just a little bit to get it to tune right at the hemp line, which was something I was looking for with each of these sets. You can see it in the videos. They're all tuning just fine with a modern pitch channer, but I did have to extend the tuning screw to bring the pitch down just a little bit. So just something to note. Well, everybody, these drones are absolutely incredible. The finish, the fittings, the mounts, they're incredible, they're gorgeous, I and mean, you can just see them right here. Remember, there will be a gallery of photos at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. But the Tim Galatri pipes here definitely have my recommendation. I mean, come on. These things are fantastic. They sound wonderful, as you can hear, and they look incredible. So they kind of tick off all of the boxes. So um, yeah, I know now that I can happily recommend uh, Tim Galatri's pipes to anyone who is needing a finely crafted set of Highland bagpipes. Well, thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you got something out of this video, please think about giving it a like, subscribing to the channel, commenting below with any thoughts you have, and sharing with any other pipers that you think, well, might need a set of pipes like this. If you want to go the extra mile, I do have a Patreon where as little as a dollar a month really helps. You'll see some names scrolling by right now. These are some fine folks that have made monthly contributions to my channel here, and it really does help um, all of the endeavors and efforts I go through to make these videos. I'm having a blast doing it, but the support really does help. So thank you guys. If you want more personalized instruction, I do give Skype and online video lessons. Go ahead and head over to www.mattpiper.com or email me at the email you see here and we'll get you going. I'm working with folks from all over the planet and I hope to work with you soon. Thanks again for watching everybody. I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper and until next time, cheers.